and I will use this to help you understand. Hello everyone. It has been five to six months since my last video as I was kind of busy in those months. So welcome back to the Shalom Mathematics channel. And also I haven't said this but if you do like my explanation feel free to push that like button, uh, subscribe, comment and share the video. Uh, okay so with that being said uh, we will get to today's main topic and that is the sum of two continuous functions is also continuous and of course we are going to prove it by using the epsilon delta definition and of course we are here we are discussing the proof for real value functions so enjoy so we are going to prove that the sum of two continuous functions is again a continuous function okay to restate it i will say like this if f and g are both continuous then f plus g is also continuous so what's the idea here if you have to show that a function is continuous you have to remember that a function is said to be continuous if it is continuous at each point in its domain so that will be our starting point okay so we want to show that the function f plus g is continuous so we just take an arbitrary point a in the domain of f plus g next we have to remember that if we want to show that a function is continuous we have to find a delta for each and every epsilon greater than zero so the next line will be let epsilon be greater than zero what do we want to do we want to find a delta greater than zero so that this one will be less than epsilon whenever this one is less than delta or you can say that whenever this is less than delta you are guaranteed that this one will be uh, less than epsilon uh, one thing i have to take note over here is that for each epsilon greater than zero we can find this delta that will be quite useful for any epsilon greater than zero okay so how are we going to get that delta it's only natural that we have to use what is given to us that is f is continuous as well as g is continuous okay so this is given to us uh, that f and g are both continuous so because f is continuous we can also say that f is continuous at a because a is a point domain and similarly g is continuous at a now comes the crucial point uh, in this proof uh, f is continuous at a g is continuous at a so for any epsilon greater than zero we can find a delta for this f and similarly for any epsilon greater than zero we can find a delta for this g okay so i will just write it down but instead of epsilon over here i will write epsilon by 2 greater than 0 you have to take note over here that we can do this one with anything that is greater than 0 but why did i choose epsilon by 2 that will be revealed in the later part of this video but this epsilon by 2 is indeed convenient for us but also we have to make sure that this one this quantity that we are choosing over here is greater than 0 but epsilon by 2 is indeed greater than 0 because epsilon is greater than 0 so for this quantity that is greater than zero, we can find a delta one so that fx minus fa is less than epsilon by two whenever x minus a is less than delta one. I will just put this whole thing as one. And similarly, because g is continuous at a, so for anything that is greater than zero, Again, I'm choosing epsilon by 2 over here because it is convenient for us. We can find a delta 2 so that gx minus ga is less than epsilon by 2 whenever x minus a is less than delta 2. I'm just writing this whole thing as 2. We, we will have to use this one uh, later on. Again, remember what we have to do. We have to find a delta that will work for an epsilon for f plus g. So what's the idea over here? Uh, the idea is that we just have to find a delta that will work for f and g 
at the same time. So uh, again, if you take a look at what we have to do, we have to get that this quantity, this whole thing should be less than epsilon whenever x minus a is less than delta. So we have to find this delta. So how are we going to do it? Because it is point wise addition. So we can do this. I am just rearranging the terms over here. We want to get that this thing is less than epsilon. So there should be a lesser symbol over here. And uh, we have to use one uh, important inequality over here and that is the triangle inequality. The triangle inequality says that uh, this one is less or equal to mod a plus mod b. Okay, so, so over here you can take this whole thing as uh, a, this whole thing as b, you will have this one fx minus fa plus gx minus ga. So we have managed to get this lesser symbol over here, but again, the last line, okay, I, I will fill this one afterwards, but we have to get the last line as, that's an epsilon, whenever x minus a is less than delta. From here, can we write this one by using 1 and 2? Because from 1 and 2, we have obtained that this one is less than epsilon by 2, and this one, uh, we have obtained that this one is less than epsilon by 2. So, so can we just directly write from over here to over here, less than epsilon by 2 plus epsilon by 2, which is equal to epsilon. It looks like we, we can do this. But in fact, we cannot do this because remember that when this one is less than epsilon by 2, we have that condition that x minus a less than delta 1. And similarly, to jump from this line to this line, we need the condition that x minus a is less than delta 2. We need to impose these conditions first. And also to impose both of them at the same time. So how will we do it? What's the idea over here? The idea is this. Uh, again, I will use this to help you understand. As you can see for this one, for this epsilon by 2, we can find a delta 1 so that all of these distances are smaller than this epsilon by 2. And for this g over here, for this epsilon by 2, we can find a delta 2 so that all of these distances are smaller than this epsilon by 2. But what you can see over here is that this delta 1 does not work for this g. It only works for this f, okay? Delta 1 works for f, it doesn't work for g, okay? Whereas delta 2, whereas delta 2 works for f as well as it works for g, okay? It works for f as you can see uh, over here. All these distances are uh, smaller than this epsilon by 2. This one does not work for g, it does not work for g because uh, this distance over here is greater than this epsilon by 2. Okay, so so which one which one will work for both of them? It is this smaller one. Okay, the smaller of the deltas will work for both f, it will work for both g for the same epsilon by 2. And if we use that, what we can write is this. If we take for delta equal minimum delta 1 delta 2 we are assured that delta we will have this one and also we will have this one so now we can do like this this first one will be less than epsilon by 2 the second one will be also less than epsilon by 2 whenever x minus a is less than delta but again you may have remembered that we do need uh, x minus a less than delta 1 as well as x minus a is less than delta 2 
But if we do have x minus a is less than delta, from this one, you can see that we can also have x minus a is less than delta 1. And similarly, we will be able to have x minus a is less than delta 2 by using this one. Okay, so now we can jump from over here to here whenever x minus a is less than this delta. So again, this line over here answers why we are using epsilon by 2. Because we want the final line to be uh, less than epsilon, so that is why uh, we are using that epsilon by 2 from the start. Okay, be because if we are using other uh, numbers uh, greater than 0, we won't be able to have this one epsilon. So that completes the proof. But what that theorem also say, we can have 2, we can have 3, we can have any finite number of continuous functions. The sum of them will always be uh, continuous provided all of them are continuous.